Right, we move to extraordinary items. There are no extraordinary items. We then move to item eight. And just for um, warning, we're going to do item eight, then we'll, we'll go to lunch after, yes. after that, and then we can get helicopters, um, both reports done after that. Um, as we started a bit later today, it's probably <coughs> going to make sense to do it that way. Kia ora, David, thank you. If you'd like to talk about the report, and then we'll move to discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Kia ora koutou, ko David McIntosh, toko anaya, um, I'm Senior Advisory Events with uh, Regional Services and Strategy. Um, this uh, um, event funding report is our standard report, it's uh, the second for this um, financial year, and um, we have made a proposal to allocate grants to six events. Um, Five of these are um, events that we've funded in the past, um, and one is a new one. Um, as uh, per our, as, um, our standard approach, we allocate um, funding for regional events on a sort of a contributory basis. We're one of a number of funders for the events. Normally, we're not sort of a major funder, so we're only, only um, providing a portion of their their funding, and we sort of aim in our funding recommendations to maintain some level of consistency between the um, events um, of a similar nature. Um, so that's probably the, the only things I'd highlight at the moment, so sort of take any questions. Thank you very much, and thanks for a fulsome report, um, lots of information there. Are there any questions? Oh, Councillor Philippine. Thank you, Chair. Kilda David. David. Um, so in regards to the 98 and a half thousand be applied to meet council savings targets, out of the applications that you have received, which have outlined, are there any of those, if we hadn't put this 98 and a half thousand in, that could have benefited from that money? Um, I, th I think most of them, um, this is the sort of amount that they'd be expecting from us. We did um, take the opportunity to re uh, recommend um, extra funding for Polyfest, um, noting the, the increased costs they're incurring with uh, having to split the event into two, with the, the Māori stage um, coming in later due to the conflicts with Te Um And um, the... The other one, the, the new event, the Matariki event, um, we think the level that we've recommended there is sort of consistent with our sort of um, funding of, of other similar events. So, yeah, we, we didn't really have a strong case for, for allocating extra to any of those events. Just for clarification, sorry, um, Chair. No, um, how many applications did you receive for this, the, the, the last of the funding? I think in the report it was about 14. Ah, yes. Yeah, so out of the, the, the applications, and when I look through the, uh, the reasons why, were there any that didn't end up make getting oh. the, 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 the budget that we, you're currently allocating could have been put on as a result of the $98,500? Could there have been, for those that missed out, the opportunity to put that event on? Um, with those ones, um, we really didn't think they were highly aligned with our um, policy priorities. Um, so it sort of, um, I guess, we thought it was more appropriate that they not be granted funding, even though some of them, you know, in their own rights, they, you know, good events, but they don't don't really meet most. A number with smaller events which don't meet regional criteria and others weren't really in the, our areas of focus for the event funding. Dear, can I just ask one more because, look, I just need to push this a little bit more. David, if we, don't, if we didn't find ourselves in the situation that's been put out there to, in regards to this annual plan, would the money that you have left been allocated to any of those events from the panel that didn't make the cut? Um, no, that would, wouldn't have formed part of our recommendation. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, that was my uh, question too. So the drive to decline those would have happened regardless of the, mm. the saving. But confirm that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Baker. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, and uh, David, I'm struggling to actually put this into a question because I, I struggled with this, um, the whole regional events thing, and um, as opposed to against local board, um, you know, why why these these events aren't being funded through local boards, and I recognise some of them having come to our local board previously. Um, and so I guess I read through the applications and I read the alignment to the regional, uh, the regional event key priorities um, and I really struggle to find any regional basis for them at all, to be honest. But, and, and, and so, Chair, I'm, I'm struggling with the question because I question the whole point of these types of regional um, uh, event funding when they are generally going for small localised events with very little regional reach. And so potentially it's a thing that we need to look at in terms of our entire um, the basis of these because I'm, I really struggle with it. I won't be voting against it because that would be unfair. But um, I just want to, I guess, flag that I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with this, uh, the whole regional event funding. Um, I think it's not not right, but sorry, I don't have a real question there, Matt, but I'm struggling with it a whole lot. I question the whole lot. No, that's um, fine for a comment, but maybe if I could form it to a question to David, I guess, would you, you have declined many of the others because of their more local focus than regional. How would how would these six, I guess, assist as reaching the regional sort of threshold for an event? Um, it, it's um, it's the reach across the region and the scale of the events, and that's that's one of the well, two of the distinguishing um, factors there. Um, I, I guess you look at something like Polyfest that you know is definitely regional goes goes beyond individual boards. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's, um, I guess, the the Matariki event um, that's coming um, out west. That that would be have multi-board reach in the same way that the Waitangi Day event out west does. It's sort of, and um, that's you know very popular and, and brings in people from you know quite far away. Um, and so. Yeah, I think these even um, some that are a bit smaller, that they're sort of in a niche area that um, you know we do have people coming from you know across the region. So that's uh, and and they would probably um, struggle to achieve the level of support um, if they were going to just individual boards. Good. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Yeah, just a very quick one, David. Just looking for a little bit more detail on the um, the. Uh, Auckland Model United Nations a application. I, I read through the application. Um, it certainly appeared to have a you know a regional reach in terms of getting out to people, even though the, <coughs> potentially I guess the number of people who are attracted is is far smaller. Was that the basis o o on which that one was um, you know largely re refused or rejected? Um, with those um, types of events, we've had applications in the past and we've of similar types of activities where it's, um, I guess, workshop style activities. And we don't, haven't really seen those as a core area of focus um, because there is actually quite a range of those sorts of things that happen and it would be hard to distinguish you know, one against another to prioritise. And so we wouldn't be able to also fund a large number of them. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Walker. Sure. Um, I've just got a question around um, the evaluation in terms of shifting um, events to the point where they're sustainable. That is, they're not a cost to council or not a significant cost to council. Given that some of these events have been running for some time, are we if you just want to move your mic towards you, sorry, Cal. Sure. Uh, do you have any um, projections for uh, these uh, amounts reducing over time? Uh, because that is the general approach that council takes, I think, in terms of policy. I th think our approach with events is, is maybe a little bit different to other activities in that, uh, that we fund through grants, so the arts... Um, arts grants. Um, events are uh, generally recurring annually for a period of time. 
They seek to obtain funding from um, a range of grant funders and also sponsorship. Um, we believe that by providing a small portion of their funding on a consistent basis uh, over an, uh, a number of years, um, that makes them, I guess, a bit more sustainable in terms of they're not, um, they're, their funding is spread across a range of funders rather than um, being locked up into a fewer number and then being at risk of, um, say, one of those withdrawing. Um, so it is, that's why we generally are only funding a small portion of the, um, the events costs. So I, I understand that. My question is around whether we seek to reduce our funding commitment over time so that we're then in a position to make money available to other um, events. Mm. I mean, for example, the Polyfest has been going for a number of years now. Uh, we provide significant support, help get it off the ground. Um, I'm assuming that over time a successful event might attract some ticketing, might attract significant sponsorship and the like, and we are able to reduce our commitment. I don't know whether that's the case or not, and I'm just asking whether <coughs> we've got a drive to do that. Um, no, it isn't something that we've actually we've taken that approach, but I, I guess it would be an alternative way of um, if it the um, committee thought that we should um, reconsider that. Um, we could do it differently in future. Thanks. As far as I know, the uh, Polyfest budget is quite large. That we're a, we are still a small portion. Yeah, it's um, we're fun at the level we're funding about five percent of their costs. Yeah. Good. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ferry. Thanks. Um, not sure if this is a fair question to ask you, but we'll give it a go, eh? Um, so with these events, um, and a number of them did come to um, local board when I was on a local board, uh, and often we would decline them because we would say you need to apply to the regional one because this is actually a regional event. So there is this um, tricky balance here, which, which Andy alluded to as well. Um, do you see if the if the the proposed budget goes through, these won't be funded anymore from this pool, will they? Is that correct? I just want to get that straight. Um, well, I guess that's a, a budget decision that. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay. Through, through the chair, look, um, Justine. I know you're online. I'm just wondering whether you had uh, wanted to respond to that, Justine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Megan, and uh, through the chair, uh, yes, to support David, I guess uh, we, uh, you know, the budgets are under proposal, of course, and haven't been decided, but it is correct that the regional events grant funding would be impacted by the budget proposals. Okay, thank you, and I don't know who to direct this one to, but um, is there any other proposed pool of money that council would have that these these events could potentially apply to instead? Um, based on the budget proposal, uh, no. That is why I tried to make clear within the supporting information yep. uh, what will be reduced and what will stop. Yeah. Okay, and, and a final question, and this is um, probably another one of my um, newbie ones. Is it is it normal to have that much left over? <laughs> in terms of unallocated? Is that a, a normal level of... I mean, I, I'm, in local board land, we usually try and allocate every cent. So um, wanting to understand, is it is it normal to have that level of unallocated funds? And given this is round two as well, did we have a lot of unallocated funds from the first round? Um, this... Um, the, generally, we've, um, in the past, have fully allocated the, the funds. Um, these last... This year and last year, um, we haven't, um, and some of that has been due to events not proceeding, um, and also a shift in timing for for some of them. And they've sort of we had some that um, took up grants and then had to delay their events. So it's the um, it's it's sort of the whole cycle has got disrupted a bit, and it's um, it's you know. Not not ideal, but um, 
Yeah. So we, I mean, I, I've had that experience with local board grants as well, where you know an event's been cancelled, say because of the weather, um, and um, the provision is. I mean, that doesn't actually affect too much how much we allocate. It means they have to pay it back, and that's the arrangement with the grant. So. I can understand why there might have been um, fewer applications in the last few years because of the disruption, but I guess the idea that people might have to cancel their event, I wouldn't have thought automatically results in fewer applications for um, that reason, because there is that provision to, to pay it back if you don't pay if you don't hold the event. Yeah, we've had, had probably it's, um, it's been more a case of maybe deferring the event, some of them, have, and so we've left the funding with them to. To go to a later date, right? So okay. it's um, okay. Thank you. And just um, thank you. And just uh, confirming, this will, if the budget proposal as consulted on, it will mean there'll be zero budget for this. Just confirming. You said impacted, Justine, but I just want to know that the budget proposal would mean that there is no funding at all for regional events. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Councillor Darby. Uh, thanks, Chair, and thanks for your work, David. Um, probably for, for you, Megan, and my question does not diminish the contributions that I've heard from the councillors today, but Megan, you've heard me before. We're, 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 the primary consideration today is to approve um, the recommendations. Um, I've seen these recommendations come um, regularly, and we approve them uh, because we've set the criteria, and that's the key, key decision I think we should be making. But Megan, I question the value of continuing to bring these as reports. Um, you know, there's one way to create um, space to deal with what we really need to be dealing with here, possibly even a plan change on helicopters, um, that we actually um, delegate authority to our staff. Set the criteria every three years, but delegate authority. Where, where are we up to on that consideration, as I've put to you prior, Megan? Uh, I can probably answer for it. We, we obviously have had a lot on our plate, but we had decided not to address this directly until we have seen the budget because we're coming up with a plan for changing the way we do things and then two months later not have this process anymore at all seemed like a bit of a waste of officer time. So if there is, if there happens to be a change in what was proposed in the budget and there is um, grants, then we're going to assess it in that case. Megan may have other comments. No, through the Chair, that, that's right. Thanks, Councillor Darby. Uh, so it still is on our radar, but just given the, uh, you know, with the new term and the process we're going through here, it would appear, it would seem that the budget decision, whatever happens there, is a good opportunity then to see um, how you might want to go forward and whether there's some delegations that could be, uh, that could be done instead. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bartley. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, David. I just wanted to know, um, does Council have the capacity to run these events themselves? Um, no, I, I guess fully um, committed to the events and staffed for the, the events we do have our, on our own programme. So, so uh, if we are to pull the funding, um, how how will these how will council still be able to support these events? Um, well, we wouldn't have any direct ability to do do that. There is, um, I guess, there is some advice that events get and support through the facilitation permit and permitting process, um, but not um, to the extent um, that would replace this this the loss of this funding. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I did want to ask, um, so you know how in the report it mentions diversification. Um, is that to try and prepare the organisers for the potential uh, repercussions of the, the budget? Um, no, there's, there's nothing in, in this, this report that um, prejudges any of that. This has continued to um, approach it on the, the way we've done in the past. Okay, thank you. You had a good question. Thanks, Councillor. Um, thank you, David. We will um, move to debate on this item now um, so you can step back from the 
table. Thank you, and thank you, Justine, as well, online. Uh, so, Councillor Filippini would like to move. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Bartley, I saw first. Sorry, Councillor Henderson. I'll, I promise you can have something later. Um, are there any uh, comments on this? Alf? Yeah. Councillor Filippini. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll um, close the debate, if that's okay, as the mover, and see if there's any... Any other uh, comments? Oh, sorry. There are no other comments, so you can I open... Oh, sorry, Councillor yeah. Bartley. I just wanted to thank the staff for the report. Uh, I also wanted to um, acknowledge all these community organisations that put on these events for us, because these uh, events actually are a way, it's not that they're coming to us and asking us for money, it's that they're actually helping us be able to meet our obligations and legislative responsibilities to achieve the four well-beings in the local government legislation. So they're actually helping us make this city better. So I do, I do want to acknowledge all these events, the multicultural aspect to it, bringing everyone together, social cohesion is so vital, especially now uh, post-COVID, post the floods. So um, yeah, I will leave it there. I won't go any further because I'll save that for the budget debate. But just acknowledging the staff for this report and these organisations. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Henderson. Yeah, thank you really quick. Just following up on Councillor Bartley here. Um, I want to just acknowledge the diversity that's really represented in these events, that, that we really have uh, um, a large cross-section of Aucklanders and uh, showing different cultures that we can all access and it's really beautiful. That we can support these events really helps us enrich our city uh, and, as Councillor Bartley said, uh, discharges our legislative ob obligations as well into the four wellbeings. Um, we always have uh, this debate, and we have had for many years, around regional versus local and where does kind of a sub-regional element fit in there. Um, that's something that I think for future policy debate we should be looking at uh, kind of behind closed doors and working on. Uh, but I think these really are regional events that touch the lives of many, many Aucklanders. Thank you. Do you want to thank you, Councillor? And yeah, I'd just like to thank staff as well. And, you know, funding these events, we do, they only are a small portion of the overall that many, mostly volunteers, go out and try to get from sponsors, whether they're private, community, philanthropic, um, and they do their best to get as much as they can for these events, which are mostly free, so they're accessible to all people in our communities. And we, um, quite proudly, are also like to partner with such important events for our city. Um, because if we were trying to fund them or have them uh, get off the ground just with council or ratepayer funds, that would be a significant cost. Um, so just want to acknowledge all the groups and going forward, um, we will be working with them, whatever the budget is, to, to see how we can support. Um, yes, so Councillor Filipina to close. Thank you, Chair. And uh, just to want to reinforce the comments that have been made. Chair, I think um, Councillor Baker um, ended up mentioning, you know, the, the uh, around um, regional events or not. But nine years ago, there was some work done um, uh, around which was regional, uh, sub-regional. That, that work uh, with our staff is still there. So if we want to pull that up at some stage, no problems at all. Uh, for the sake of $600,000 cut, um, the comments that have been made by the three speakers, uh, that's what is... is, is currently on the block, um, all the diversity, all the events that we put on. Um, so look, but that's, that's a debate we will have around this annual plan. Um, but just be very clear, that's, that's exactly what's on the block. And, it, and, and that's our input in regards to a lot of the events that make Tamaki Makoto. So I will be supporting um, this, obviously. And, and just one, one last comment um, I, I want to make, Chair, is that um, depending on how we get on with the discussion around um, the annual plan, um, if this uh, fund in, in particular survives, I, I would then be pushing through your committee, um, Chair, uh, the bringing back of multi-year funding for some of the major events um, that are currently on the chopping block. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you very much, Councillor Filipina. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So, oh, thank you. Welcome, Deputy Mayor. And we are now going to go to lunch. So we will have, um, we will come back at 1.30. Oh,
There is no, uh, I've, I've provided biscuits, but there is, there is no lunch, so we will see you back here at 1.30.